headlines at this hour on VTV News. ASEAN Future Forum 2024 promotes ASEAN future of unity in diversity. And only two companies made bids and bought gold bars in Vietnam's first gold auction in 11 years. In our world news, Russia promotes connection of Persian Gulf with Arctic Ocean. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good morning, it is 8 a.m. local time in Hanoi, and you're watching VTV News. I'm Huyen Chen with the top stories. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ting attended and delivered a speech at the opening ceremony of the ASEAN Future Forum 2024 held in Hanoi on Tuesday. The event drew the attendance of Lao Prime Minister Son Se Sifadon, who is chairman of ASEAN 2024, ASEAN Secretary General Cao Kim Haorn, and it also gathered nearly 500 delegates including government leaders, scholars and ambassadors from the bloc and its partner countries. Speaking at the forum, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching emphasized that the world today is facing major turning points with three emerging strategic trends. He said that the world is witnessing increasing competitiveness between countries and regions, while the exponential growth of technology can create both breakthroughs and risks of inequality for developing countries. To realize the ASEAN Community Vision 2045 of vibrant, sustainable and highly integrated economies, the Prime Minister proposed that ASEAN jointly implement the five enhancers. The bloc needs to strengthen its unity and diversity while upholding the spirit of independence and self-reliance. It's crucial for the bloc to enhance the strategic trust among its members and partners to mitigate conflicts and maintain stability and prosperity in the area and the world. Other missions include promoting green growth and the digital economy as the new drivers for growth and renewing traditional growth drivers. The bloc should also enhance harmonious, sustainable and inclusive development, putting people at the center as the driving force, resource and goal of development. The other important thing is to strengthen the mobilization of all resources and create strategic breakthroughs in institutions, human resources, infrastructure and national governance. Emphasizing tomorrow starts from today, the Prime Minister affirmed that Vietnam will continue to collaborate and make concerted efforts with other countries, partners and international friends, particularly ASEAN countries. This commitment aims to pave the way for a future of unity in diversity, thus contributing positively to peace, stability, cooperation and development in both the region and the world. Within the framework of the ASEAN Future Forum 2024, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ting and Lao Prime Minister Son Se Sifidon co-chaired a business roundtable towards a cohesive, resilient and a sustainable ASEAN business community. The roundtable took place in Hanoi on Tuesday. At the event, the Lao Prime Minister said that digital transformation is in full swing. Therefore, there needs to be closer coordination between businesses and governments and between countries. Businesses believe that to promote digital economy, ASEAN needs to invest in infrastructure, train human resources, establish a robust legal environment, and develop technology incubators to foster innovation. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching emphasized that along with green transition, digital transformation has become an inevitable trend and a new driver for rapid and sustainable development, contributing to the prosperity of ASEAN, the region and the world. He proposed three breakthrough directions to position ASEAN as a global model in digital transformation. The first is to promote equal access to digital transformation and the digital economy on the principle of harmonizing benefits and sharing risks, ensuring transparency, safety, inclusiveness, and sustainability. The second is strongly promoting ASEAN's self-reliance and autonomy in digital transformation and soon completing the ASEAN Digital Economy Framework Agreement. The third is promote a global, all-people, and comprehensive approach in ASEAN's digital economic development, 
focusing on solving common and global problems that affect the entire population such as pressure on labor restructuring, cybersecurity, cybercrime, and the downsides of AI. The Prime Minister urged ASEAN partners to continue to closely cooperate, support, and accompany ASEAN in general, and Vietnam in particular, in digital transformation process. He also called on businesses and investors to lead the way in digital transformation and green transition within the ASEAN development process. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính on Tuesday hosted a reception for ASEAN Secretary General Cao Kim Haun, who is paying a working trip to Vietnam and attending the ASEAN Future Forum 2024. Also on the same day, the Prime Minister also hosted a reception for Indonesian Foreign Minister Redno Masudi, who is now on an official visit to Vietnam, and to co-chair the fifth meeting of the Vietnam-Indonesia Joint Committee on Bilateral Cooperation. Also on the same day, while receiving Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi, the Vietnamese Prime Minister assessed that the Vietnam-Indonesia strategic partnership is developing strongly in all fields, with economic cooperation being a bright spot. Speaking highly of Vietnam's foreign policy of independence, self-reliance, multilateralization, the Indonesian Foreign Minister said that Indonesia fully agrees and supports Vietnam's profound vision on the future of ASEAN. The two sides also agreed to back ASEAN's central role in addressing regional issues, including maintaining the bloc's common stance on the East Sea issue, and promoting the implementation of ASEAN's five-point consensus on the Myanmar issue. While meeting with the ASEAN Secretary General on Tuesday, Prime Minister Phạm Minh Ching thanked the ASEAN Secretary General for his attendance at ASEAN Future Forum, which was held at the Initiative of Vietnam. Speaking highly of the ASEAN Secretariat and ASEAN Secretary General's contributions to the ASEAN community, the Vietnamese government leader stressed that the group has made important achievements after nearly six decades of establishment and development. For his part, the ASEAN Secretary General said the AFF is an important initiative reflecting the strategic vision of the Vietnamese Prime Minister and Vietnam in promoting the establishment of a dedicated ASEAN Forum on the future of the bloc. On this occasion, the two sides agreed to strengthen cooperation, consolidate solidarity and the central role of ASEAN. Under the chair of National Assembly Chairman of Vung Ding Hui on Tuesday, the National Assembly Standing Committee discussed important contents in preparation for the upcoming seventh session of the National Assembly. Regarding the draft report on the thematic monitoring results of the implementation of policies and laws on ensuring order and traffic safety from 2009 to 2023, the traffic police force have addressed nearly 17 million violations. Over 1 million inspections were conducted, resulting in the resolution of 1.5 million violations. Deputies commanded on the Ministry of Public Security and Ministry of Transport for their efforts in controlling and managing violations. However, they also voiced concerns about certain individuals' lack of awareness regarding compliance with traffic safety laws. We recommend further assessment of traffic participant awareness. We suggest introducing traffic safety education into schools at an early stage. Wearing a helmet was widely practiced five to six years ago. However, in recent times, it seems to have diminished in importance. Moreover, some helmets aren't safe at all as they don't provide protection. Vehicles that are too old have a huge impact on road traffic safety. If there are no emission standards, it is difficult to have a roadmap to convert or gradually eliminate old and outdated vehicles that cause both pollution and safety risks. Commanding on the drop amended value added tax law, some deputies were concerned that limiting services that enjoy the 0% tax rate in non tariff zones could affect export and processing businesses. If value added tax exemption are not granted, commodity prices will increase, leading to a decline in the competitiveness of goods and affecting investment environment attractiveness. 
commenting on the report on the results of the implementation of the monitoring program in 2023 and the first months of 2024, as well as the 2025 monitoring program, the National Assembly Standing Committee agreed on two topics of the National Assembly and the Standing Committee to monitor next year. These include legal policies on environmental protection and human resources for socio-economic development. On Tuesday, a Politburo member, Chung Thi Mai, chairwoman of the Vietnam-Japan Parliamentary Friendship Group, received a Japanese ambassador to Vietnam, Yamada Takio. She expressed appreciation for the ambassador's significant contributions to the Vietnam-Japan relations over the past four years, notably at their successful collaboration in commemorating the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations in 2023 and elevating their ties to a comprehensive strategic partnership. Ambassador Yamada Takio conveyed gratitude for the support received during his tenure and pledged continued efforts to bolster the friendly cooperative relations between Vietnam and Japan, irrespective of his position. On Tuesday, while collaborating with ASEAN Secretary General Kao Kim Haorn during his attendance at the ASEAN Future Forum in Hanoi, Foreign Minister Bui Thanh Son underscored ASEAN's imperative to uphold a balanced and harmonious approach. The Foreign Minister emphasized the necessity to foster practical cooperation, cultivate trust, align interests, and contribute positively and responsibly to peace, security, stability, and a sustainable development. The Foreign Minister also urged the Secretariat to enhance its support for member countries, bolster research and forecasting capabilities, improve intersectorial and interpillar coordination, and mobilize resources for secretariat activities. Additionally, on Tuesday afternoon, Foreign Minister Bui Teng Sun convened with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Brunei to deliberate on a mutual regional and international concerns. Coming up next on VTV News. Only two buyers in first gold auction in 11 years. And uh, removing legal issues expected to help fisheries industry develop sustainably. watching a VTV News Live. Now, after having to cancel once due to the lack of business participation and incomplete deposit procedures on Monday, the gold auction was held at the State Bank of Vietnam Operations Center. Eleven businesses and commercial banks participated in this bidding session. And at the end of Monday's gold bar auction, only two companies made bids and bought 20% of the gold bars the State Bank of Vietnam offered to sell on Tuesday in its first gold auction in 11 years. At the end of the gold auction, there were only two winning bidders, SJC Company and ACB Bank. They bought a total of 3,400 tails out of the 16,800 that the central bank offered for sale. The transaction prices were slightly above the minimum set at the auction, with the gold being bought at 3,196.3 US dollars and 3,195.9 US dollars per tail. The most important issue is the difference between domestic gold prices and international gold prices. I suggest the government to use taxes to regulate the price. By taxing, the state can collect budget revenue. Buyers must accept high prices if they want to buy gold. Therefore, the price of gold will approach the world price. There needs to be synchronization and consistency in market management, such as taxation, electronic invoices, and market management. The State Bank, the Ministry of Finance, and Ministry of Industry and Trade, and the Ministry of Public Security must clearly assign roles in management. 
By the end of Tuesday, the selling price of SJC Gold was listed at 3,183.3 US dollars per till, and the buying price was 3,273.7 US dollars per till. At this price, SJC Gold is still about 393 US dollars per till, higher than the world price. According to the State Bank, in the future, it will continue to organize the next gold auctions to increase supply to the market. The Ho Chi Minh City People's Committee has asked residents to start storing fresh water to cope with seasonal heat, saltwater intrusion and water shortages. Accordingly, localities need to identify areas at risk of water shortages to proactively implement solutions, ensuring water supply for residents. Additionally, canals and infill ditches need to be dredged to increase water storage capacity and sewers need to be regulated to ensure salinity prevention. These measures are taken to ensure production activities and residents' daily lives. According to the hydrometeorological station in the southern region, rainfall from April to May this year will be lower than the yearly average. Directive number 32 of Secretariat promotes marine farming and reduces dependence on aquatic exploitation as some of its major content. Great potential that requires high determination, but many barriers marking a marine farming difficulty in many localities. More on the following story. Decree 11 on allocating sea areas to organizations and individuals to exploit natural resources was issued more than three years ago. But up to now, no locality has yet assigned sea areas to businesses and fishermen to manage. Although the granting authority belongs to the Provincial People's Committee, if they want to be granted water surface for marine farming, they must ask for the opinions of at least six ministries and functional agencies. If we are given the water surface rise for 30 years, we will feel secure in investing more. This is also the basis to increase the attraction of foreign investment in technology transfer. The project to develop marine aquaculture until 2030 with a vision to 2045 has been approved by the government for four years. Recently, many provinces and cities have announced plans, but when it comes to detailed planning for the field of marine farming, there are still many problems. The most challenging problem for the province in implementing the marine farming project is the legal problem of marine spatial planning, and the government's policy mechanisms on deep water marine farming have not yet been issued. We will recommend that the government quickly resolve issues related to marine space planning and marine farming space. At the same time, priority should be given to supporting cooperatives to switch from exploitation to farming. Vietnam has an economic exclusion zone of 1 million square kilometers, but the marine farming area only accounts for more than 20 percent of the total aquaculture area in the country. Removing legal issues expected to help the fisheries industry develop sustainably. The Mokchoa tourism area has been recognized as a national tourism site, according to a decision issued by the Minister of Culture, Sports and Tourism on Tuesday. The Mokchoa National Tourism Area is located in the two districts of Mokchoa and Vân Hồ in Sơn La Province, spanning an area of over 206,000 hectares. It boasts three main areas, the Mokcho Resort Center, the Mokcho Ecotourism Center, and the Mokcho Entertainment Center. The Mokcho Tourism Area plays a key role in the development of Sơn La. Some of its key responsibilities include being an ecological and cultural preservation area, a key economic development region of South Sơn La Province, a center of agricultural, forestry, and handicraft production, and holding an important position in security and national defense. The ceremony of praying for rain and a good harvest is a typical tradition of many ethnic groups, including the Manom people in the Central Highlands. This large-scale event is often held during the dry season, expressing a significant spiritual value and underscoring the human nature connection. The Manong people in Doctor village, Kopui Commune, Kompong district, have built elevated floors and ceremony poles next to a small stream. 
a house containing agricultural products and cultivation tools, is situated in the middle of the ceremonial ground. The local people also make several mabuit, tassels made from bamboo. These tassels symbolize rice party flowers. We use them to worship God for a good harvest. Many households in the village also bring wine jars and chickens to the ceremony. These are their offerings to pray for good luck in the upcoming crop. As the bustling sound of gongs commences, the shaman performs the rituals of worshipping the gods. We pray for rain, a successful harvest, and peace. We ask the gods to grant good luck and for the trees to grow healthily. Villagers hold this event two to three times a year, depending on the harvest and drought situation. When the ceremonial rituals are completed, villagers created cultivation activities. They spray water to stimulate rain, poke holes, and spread seeds in the fields. Young people go to collect honey. These activities symbolize the villagers' hard work and desire for a bountiful harvest, as well as express their gratitude for natural products from nature. This ceremony of praying for rain is our long-standing tradition. We must uphold it and pass it on to our children and grandchildren so they do not abandon our customs. The prayer ceremony not only contributes to preserving traditions and cultural space, but can also serve as a local tourism product. These activities help attract tourists from across the country to experience the culture of ethnic groups in the Central Highlands. Coming up next in our world news. Russia promotes connection with Persian Gulf of Persian Gulf with Arctic Ocean. And a climate change pose a health risk for 70% of world's workers, according to UN. Now moving on to our world news. Russia calls on all interested countries to participate in the International North-South Transport Corridor project connecting the Persian Gulf with the Arctic Ocean. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced this at the event commemorating the 50th anniversary of the groundbreaking of the Baikal Amur Trans-Siberian Railway. The North-South International Transport Project was first announced at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in November 2023. The project's goal is to connect Russia, Iran, Azerbaijan and India. An important part of the North-South Corridor is a 160 kilometers long railway worth 1.7 billion U.S. dollars, expected to start construction this year. The line will serve as the final link in the railway linking Russia with ports in the Persian Gulf and provide easier access to India. China on Tuesday raised the rainstorm warning level in Guangdong province to red, the highest level in the country's weather warning scale. According to Chinese state media, the current floods in Guangdong may be the most serious in the past century. Shenzhen City is on the list of areas experiencing heavy rain and the risk of flash floods is very high. Heavy rains in recent days in Guangdong have caused water levels in rivers to rise, causing a serious flooding. Heavy rain followed by landslides killed at least four people. Ten people went missing and many roads were blocked. More than 100,000 people have been evacuated to avoid floods. Damage was estimated at nearly 20 million U.S. dollars. More than 2.4 billion people around the world are facing health risk related to climate change. According to a warning from the International Labour Organization, more than 70 percent of the workers worldwide will have to work in extremely hot weather conditions. The report notes that 1.6 billion people work in jobs exposed to UV radiation, with nearly 19,000 deaths each year from non-melanoma skin cancers. Workplace air pollution also affects 1.6 billion people, killing 860,000 outdoor workers each year. In addition, nearly 19,000 people died each year due to temperatures higher than the body can withstand. Europe is increasingly facing bouts of heat so intense that the human body cannot cope. 
as climate change continues to raise temperatures. This is the latest warning from the EU's Copicus Climate Monitoring Service and the World Meteorological Organization, WNO, on Monday. More on this in the following story. In a report on Europe's climate, the WMO noted last year extreme conditions, including a July heat wave which pushed 41% of southern Europe into strong, very strong or extreme heat stress, the biggest area of Europe under such conditions in any day on record. The year, as you know, has globally been extremely unusual, especially when compared with the climate of the last few decades, centuries, or even millennia. So some of the events of 2023 took the scientific community by surprise because of their intensity, their speed of onset, extent, and duration. Parts of Spain, France, Italy, and Greece experienced up to 10 days of extreme heat stress in 2023, defined as feels like temperature of more than 46 degrees Celsius. Deaths related to heat have increased by around 30 percent in Europe in the last 20 years. Hundreds of thousands of people were affected by extreme climate events in 2023, which have been responsible for large losses at continental level, estimated to be at least in the tens of billions of euros. The EU's Environment Agency urged governments last month to prepare healthcare system for climate change and called for EU rules to protect outdoor workers from extreme heat. Last year was the world's hottest since records began. Europe is the world's fattest warming continent, according to the report. Greenhouse gas emissions were the biggest cause of last year's exceptional heat. Factors including the El Niño weather pattern also played a role. Now let's take a look at the weather forecast. That's all the news we have for this hour. To rewatch our program, you can download our mobile app VTV Go or check out our YouTube channel VTV for Go. Thank you for watching and see you next time.